Hi, my name is Beshad. I'm here in Soundtrade Studios today and I'm going to take you through the mixing tutorials brought to you by Record Union and SAE Institute Stockholm. To begin with, I'm going to start my digital audio workstation, which is Logic. Here I'm going to import my multi-tracks that I received from the producer and they are of course in the wave format and the sampling frequency on this should be 44.1 kilohertz and the bit depth is 24 bits. Now I'm going to import them here. I also want to import the tempo. So now you can see that I have a lot of files. They are the same length but they don't have information all the time. The first thing I'm going to do here is to organize my session. To do that I'm going to choose to begin with the similar instruments. For example, here I can choose the drums. I'm going to stack them together. I'm going to name the stack called drums, so I know which group it is. And of course, I'm going to color them. And here I'm going to choose pink because it looks nice and it pops out, so I know exactly where my drums are. Then, as you can see here, there's a lot of free space and a lot of silence, which I don't want because I won't know when the track starts and when it ends. What I want to do here is to mark the region that I want to strip the silence from and press Control X and then I get this window up. And then I press OK here and as you can see it stripped the silence. So I'm going to keep doing this on a couple more and so on. And when I've done it on every track and I have grouped every single instrument in their respective group then I'm good to go to start mixing and then it would look something like this. Now as you can see I have my drums, I have the basses, I have the other instruments, I have the vocals separate, I have the effects and of course I have my reference mix here just to make sure that I'm not too far off in the mix. One of my most common tools that I use is an equalizer. I'm sure you heard of it. You can use it in your car stereo, in your home stereo and of course in your music production. Let's take a look. Here as you can see I have my kick drum and if I open up my equalizer you see that my kick drum it has a very very high energy point here on the low frequencies and uh, what I can do with this EQ is that instead of just going and increasing all the volume and all the frequency range at the same time as I can do here with my fader I can just go in and choose a specific part, a specific frequency, as you can see here, and I can just choose to boost it. And of course, I can narrow it down to make it more specific, more surgical. If I find a bad frequency, maybe I could lower it down a little bit, or I could just do an easy and a slight boost just on the top frequencies or just on the low frequencies. And I can do that with my Q setting here. So here I can just if I want to increase the low end, I can do that. If I want to decrease it, I can do that. Or maybe I want to boost the click sound from the kick. Then I can do it here. So this is how I can use an EQ on my drums, for example. Now let's take a look on the vocals and see what I can do there. Here you can see that a vocal is not very similar to the kick. I don't have so much low frequent information. Instead the main part and the most relevant part of my vocals it's here. On the high end I get a little bit more sibilance, I get a little bit more S's and if I lower the frequency a little bit I get more presence on the, from the vocals and as you can hear here it gets more present and if I do the opposite of it and if I take it down here or use a shelf for example, and take it down, you see that it sounds filtered or it sounds like it's from coming from far away. So this is what you can do with an EQ. I'm just going to find some disturbing frequencies like this, maybe, and I can sweep it, yeah, like that. And then I lower it gently, not to, not to change the whole sound of the vocal, but just to gently dip the bad and harsh frequencies to clean it up a little bit. So, another tool that I use very often is a dynamic processor called Compressor. Basically what the compressor does is that you get to set a limit for 
when the signal is too loud and that is called the threshold. Whenever the signal goes above your limit, you tell the compressor that now is your time to start to work. And what you want to do is to lower the signal that is above the limit. And that, that's when you use something called the ratio. And uh, the ratio here is you telling the compressor that this is how much I want to decrease the signal. So if I choose, for example, ratio 10 here, I tell the compressor that whenever the signal goes above this limit, you have to decrease it 10 times. So I have two other parameters that are called attack and release. If I set a very fast attack, then I basically tell the compressor to start working immediately when the signal passes above its limit. If I put it on like a little bit slower attack time, then the compressor takes its time to start working, so it won't start, start working immediately. And of course it's the same thing with the release, but on the other end, when the signal goes down below the limits, and then your re release time will decide how long after that the compressor is going to stop working. So if I have very low release, the compressor will stop working immediately. But when I put it on a longer release time, it will take a little bit time before it stops working. And of course, what I do here with a compressor is that I lower the signal. And when I do that, the overall sound or the overall volume will be lower. So I have to compensate that. And that's what this makeup gain is for. So here, if I play this drum track, for example, you can see that my gain reduction here is between two and three. And so I have put my makeup gain on three just to make sure that I don't lose any volume while doing that. So that's how a compressor is used in this case for drums. If you take a look at this vocal region here, you can see that the phrases are not equally loud. What I want to do here is to even that out. So I want to raise the lower parts and I want to lower the higher part. In this case, a compressor would be very good to use. If I set my attack time on the fastest possible, as you see here, it's going to work very fast. And then I set my threshold, and as you can see, then it will reduce the signal very more aggressively. And that's not something I want for this vocals. I just want it to take up to five decibels, maybe. As you can see, if I adjust the attack time, you see that it will take some time before it actually activates the compressor. But here I would like it quite fast and uh, if I set the release time at very low you see that the meter will go back very fast and sometimes that's bad because you'll get the unwanted uh, breathing sound and noises be between the phrases and that's not something you'd like so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna set this on, on a slower release time so here my makeup gain won't increase the unnecessary parts. So something like that and as you can see here my gain reduction is up to 5 decibels so I'm gonna increase my makeup gain to something like that. There I have some compression on a vocal and that's a good way to use compression. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed this please make sure to watch the other episodes.